Good morning, I'm Angela and this is A Cup of Sea on Tuesday, June 14th, 2011. How are you today? Uh, today I want to start by reciting a poem or a statement, depending on how you want to look at it, of a, an elder of the Native American Hopi tradition. I have this up on my Facebook and I love it. It says so much all in one statement, so I'm going to press on. You've been telling people that this is the 11th hour. Now you must go back and tell people that this is the hour. And there are things to be considered. Where are you living? What are you doing? What are your relationships? Are you in the right relations? Where is your water? Know your garden. It is time to speak your truth, create your community, be good to each other, and do not look outside of yourself for the leader. He clasps his hands together, smiles, and says, this could be a good time. There is a river flowing now very fast. It is so great and swift that there are those who will be afraid. They will try to hold on to the shore. They will feel they are being torn apart and will suffer greatly. No, the river has its destination. The elders say we must let go of the shore, push off into the middle of the river, keep our eyes open, our heads above the water, and I say, see who is in there with you and celebrate. At this time in history, we are to take nothing personally, least of all ourselves. For the moment we do, our spiritual growth and journey comes to a halt. The time of the lone wolf is over. Gather yourselves. Banish the word struggle from your vocabulary. All that we do now must be done in sacred manner and in celebration because we are the ones we've been waiting for. That is perfect in so many ways. I don't even know where to begin, but I do because I have a topic for today, which is anxiety and letting go, learning to let go. I talked about in the last webcast about um, how we have so much going on, more so than ever before. And, you know, we're running, running, running. And it's so true because we have all this stuff going on in our heads that we've almost become in industrialized and post-industrialized nations ADD, like everybody ADD with a attention deficit disorder because we have so much to look at, so much to consider, so many things to think about, so many things to do that we, we get caught up in that and we sort of start identifying ourselves in that. So, and it becomes counterproductive. It has become counterproductive. Look at how much anxiety and depression and everything has just gone on rampant today. So, you know, it's funny is I was talking to a friend of mine like within the last week and we were talking about how things have changed and the difference between how things have changed with the generations because she had asked me like how, you know, with all of us that are going through all these changes and doing all this work, you know, what about those in different generations, um, the older ones who don't want to um, grasp on to the change and stuff like that. But, you know, a part of it comes from the mindset and from where you're coming from. I thought of this great analogy, and I love amusement parks, so this was a great analogy, I thought. And, um, you know, if you start back with the uh, generation that was in the Depression, they're sort of like the merry-go-round generation because they were taught to be in a very tight, controlled arena. You know, the, the rug was pulled out from under them, rightfully so, and so they, they, their way of learning how to adapt was to be very controlled about the way they lived. and. And, and, and put this box around them on this is how to be safer. The next generation was more like that tilt the world generation where they're, um, you know, they're a little more crazy, a little more wild, but it's still very controlled in very many, very many respects. And that flowed right into the roller coaster generation. And um, all of this flows into the other. There's no definite line. Um, so like flows into the roller coaster generation of more like, hey, we're gonna change. Forget about this box. We're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna push the limits and find boundaries. I think that sort of peaked in the late sixties, early seventies, and that flows right into what I'm calling the cliff diving generation of, hey, we're just gonna dive off that cliff. Not only are we diving off that cliff, but we're diving right into the clouds and we have no idea what's underneath. We're just gonna trust that we're gonna be able to land safely. And then I think what comes next is, is seriously the flying generation because we are so in this uptick on the exponential curve of so many things, not just physical 
around us, but metaphysical and spiritual and, and all this age of remembering, remembering who we are. And, you know, you hear about the term, the, you know, grand awakening and all that kind of stuff. And it's such a phenomenal time. But what's key is because things are changing, like, very quickly, we have to actually just let go of the box altogether. And it's that box that we are in, um, no matter what kind it is or even how, like, you know, um, bendy it can be, we just need to let it go um, in many ways because this way we can let go of the shore. And that's why I love this statement so much about we must let go of the shore, put, you know, push off into the middle of the river, keep our eyes open, our heads above the water, look around us and celebrate. It's time to just let it flow and let go and flow down that river and stop worrying about, wow, am I going to hit rocks? Am I going to hit a waterfall? And, you know, am I going to eat by a shark <laughs> or a barracuda or whatever? Um, let go because you know what? When you let go, instead of doing this and clashing, um, up against what it is that you're trying to accomplish um, or, or forcing your way through like a bowl in a china shop. Instead, you start becoming more fluid and more like that water in the river and you, you assimilate and you can flow through so much easier. The first step to doing that is to be able to quiet the chatter in the mind. Um, Last time I was talking about connecting to everything around you. Now, what's really I'm going to talk about today is sort of connecting into what's inside of you. And not the voice or the chatter. And, you know, depending on who you want to talk to, it's the ego or all this stuff, which is like all worried and, and has all this stuff set up. And, and get right up into your higher self and start saying, okay, higher self, tell me, tell me what's going on and give me that clarity that I need. I truly believe not just that our, the leader is within ourselves, but I, I truly believe that we know it all inside of us, that we have it, that we, when we tap in and tap into the whole, that we actually have all those answers, that um, right now we're so trained into thinking we have to ask others to get, um, that we've forgotten that it's as simple as looking inside. I myself have gone through 20 some odd years of learning how to do this and probably just finally have gotten to the point of a much, to be in a much better place and be able to um, tap in much more so in the past two years. But it, it's very individual for the person as to how you can do that. I am going to post an audio for you um, probably later today that it can give you basics on how to sort of calm the mind. It's a very, it's, it's meditative and probably about 15 minutes. But you don't have to use that. It's individual for everybody. You might want to take a walk. You want, want to go mountain climbing or hiking or swimming or just go work out. Or, you know, when I took, I took martial arts for almost eight years and there's nothing like sweating so much you can barely stand up to totally clear your head. And then come back and say, you know, that was really not a big deal. When you let go of the shore, you throw the box out, and you just go with the flow, it's amazing that the current and the river takes care of you, that you know where you're going. The river does have its destination. And since we can tap into that flow, we can, we can trust. Once we can feel that we're tapped into it, we can trust that we know what we're doing, even not at this, you know, this very physical conscious level. So... That's my homework for today. My homework for you to, for today is to discover what it is that allows you to let all of it go, to stop thinking too much. Um, and when you get hung up in those anxieties, which I hear so many people do, and I, I talk to people all the time who are, I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid this is going to happen. I'm afraid this isn't going to happen. I'm afraid if I do this, this is going to happen. So what? Uh, I just recently went to New Mexico and saw uh, Keisha Crowther, who they call Little Grandmother. She's of the Lakota tradition, I believe. And one of the things she said, I've quoted so many times since I came back, which is, when you look at the walls tumbling down around you, realize that they are the walls that kept you in prison. When you get rid of that box, realize it's the box that's kept you limited. That once you let go of it and you let go of the shore and you follow the flow of the river, that you will get every place that you want to go. So, so I am at my 10-minute 
point. And so in closing, I want you, this is your homework for today, between now and Thursday. I want you to start thinking about, and not just thinking about, but doing what it is that helps you clear your mind and get back into yourself, whether it's biking or running or reading or doing something creative like arts or drawing and stuff like that, or just going and sitting outside and connecting in. Um, I want you to figure out what it is that's going to help you close that chatter down and start tapping into you and start doing it, whether it's 5, 10, 15 minutes a day, um, whatever it is that you can fit in, that's, the, that, that's what's going to work for you. So on that, have a good day. I'll see you on Thursday. This is Angela with a cup of tea.